Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the MSP Initiative Live. Today is May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Here we are, the 5th of May. Hopefully everybody has their happy hours planned for after work today. But it is uh, well well underway. We're in May. Before you know it, it'll be June. And, uh, you know, the summertime will be in full force. I mean, that's definitely coming. Uh, but interesting, <coughs> always interesting things happening in uh, technology land. Um, I am not going to have a co-host today, so we will go radio format style, and we'll uh, we'll talk about the uh, the ebb and flow. Uh, but as always, I kind of do some housekeeping in the beginning, so we'll do that now. So uh, MSPinitiative.com. Uh, under sessions, you will have a podcast and video format version of every session we've ever done, and there's hundreds uh, uh, along the way. Um, keep an eye on our MSP community block parties. So we have three definitely planned. Now they're a little bit towards uh, the back end of the year, uh, but we know where they are, and we're uh, wrapping up some final details so that we can announce them. So you can, you know, make sure you have them on your schedule, and they will be fun. And lastly, the Channel Strong tour. Um, which our next leg is coming up here, uh, not next week, but the week after. And we will be doing, uh, and here are all of our weeks posted, but we'll be in Chicago, Grand Rapids, Indianapolis, Lexington, Kentucky, and Nashville, Tennessee, starting May 16th and ending on May 20th. So if you happen to be in any one of those cities, love to see you. Um, please go to mspinitiative.com under Channel Strong and you can write, uh, put, request a, an invite. And then you can see the rest of the weeks here, uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight spread out throughout the rest of the year. Um, so definitely take a look and see uh, where we'll hopefully be somewhere nearby and you can surely stop by. Uh, so there is <clears throat> there is that. Well, it looks like, looks like Pete volunteered today to be my, my, my co-anchor. So uh, he's signing in right now. Um, so there is the housekeeping items. Uh, but just keep your eyes on MSPinitiative.com. That's where we put all of our stuff and on social and so on and so forth. So I'm going to unmute everyone. Uh, you'll be able to chime in should you be so inclined. Uh, we'll kind of go radio format. We always love to hear everybody's opinions. Uh, just a reminder, you're recorded and it is online. So, you know, don't say I didn't tell you before. So that being said, how are you doing today, Pete? Doing well, George. How are you? Oh, uh you know, I actually feel like summer's coming. It's like warm enough where like the windows are down and, you know, you open up the moon roof and like, you know, the air. I don't have hair, but, you know. But 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 do you really want me to comment on that? No, no, no. I, 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 I'm just going to say I just dipped my pools in the 86 degree pool water. Yeah, you're you're always in summertime, I feel like. I don't know. It's it's early summer here. I'm at, I'm at the beach right now. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, yeah. But... Mr. Mr. San Diego over there. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> New York, New York. Just happens to be in San Diego. New York with a touch of San Diego. Yeah. Right, right, right. Nice. Right. Yeah. So so you do all your traveling when it's not summertime or when it's summertime? I don't know. Summertime is busy, uh, busy time with conferences and other events. I don't know. Uh, there's not too many conferences this summer. I think they all really stack up, uh, <clears throat> you know, end of August on, right? Yeah, it's uh, definitely a fall thing. Yeah. Fall, Conference. winter. Yeah, conferences like and, I, and we, I, I have a know, master, you, I have a master schedule of like every event on the planet. If you really want to see it, I can send it to you. I want to see it. Okay, <laughs> is it's it all lot tech of, related? Uh, no, I mean it's you know we 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 have to comb you know through all of the various places and ask people where, when, why, how. The problem is there's a lot of you know like regional events right that overlap too. Oh right, right. So, there are. Yeah, you know, it does definitely add quite a bit to uh, to all the things going on. But and now that things are in full force, right? All the stuff that didn't happen in twenty and twenty one is definitely happening now. So everybody coming with you know, a vengeance. Here, yeah. I'm in Las Vegas, and we're, it's just crazy how people are just coming out in droves. Well, they definitely got to make up I for mean, lost time. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you were planning a conference, like like not just a regional event, a conference, okay? Yeah. Um, and you didn't, and like Vegas, Texas, Florida guaranteed to happen. Right. Definitely. So like all of like you, you looked at, well, how many times I was like, I'm going to start getting timeshares in these areas. Right. Cause I'm like, I'm going back over and over again. 
So uh, definitely Florida, definitely Texas, definitely Vegas. And mm-hmm. we, I mean, you know, you, I've said this many times. I don't know if you've ever heard me say it, but events in Vegas are tough because, you know, they'll pick up their badge, check in, and then, you know, there's the strip for the rest of the time. So Correct. Um, it's, you know, it's, I, I, I think she's right. I've seen the last several events that I have seen, and they're not necessarily channel events. I, I mean, like, Uh, different types of industries and clubs, you know, and other things that I get notifications on every single one of them has been, it's a meeting in Vegas. So if she's seeing that, that that there's a lot of activity going on here, I've seen it from just the advertisements that I've seen anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I was trying to get to the NFL draft, which was on the strip, right? Right in front of the the Bellagio. It was, yeah, they, they they, they converted Bellagio fountains. They definitely shut down a lot of the strip. Like they you told, and now they're thinking of doing it permanently. The ta- the uh, buzz, the buzz is now they're going to shut down a lot of the strip for traffic because it's only going to be pedestrian traffic. We'll see wow. how that flies. If well, I moved here in '81, and you know, cruising the strip and down, you know, all the way downtown was a thing to do when you were a teenager on on Friday night. So, um, yeah. All those nostalgic things are gone, though. That's why it's it's, it's crazy yeah. now. Like driving on the strip, right? It's not. It, well, it kind well, of the, the strip has expanded. Yeah. It just keeps on going and going and going. I mean, yep. George, could you see me having to drive with the trailer on the strip? No. <laughs> that wouldn't I mean, be. I mean, good. I mean, I mean, I've seen trailers on the strip, but technically, yes, I had to do it for the for the for the West Coast Channel Strong last year with that U-Haul. Yeah, but yeah. I'd take that U-Haul over my trailer. Oh yeah, your U haul is like your your trailer's like five. Years. <laughs> it's only, yeah. I mean, it's only twenty six foot, so it's probably about close to thirty foot overall. Yeah, no, no thanks, but uh, I think I've learned. My and is it a fifth wheel? It is not. That would be great if it was a fifth wheel, because I could almost jackknife if I wanted to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, let's, I still have let's... I still have back bumper lessons that I've learned the hard way. So, I, was, I was gonna say you did find that that guy near you that does trailer repair clearly yes he's welding right now he's uh, i got pictures today the, the rear end is being torn off and put back on so. yeah let's let's avoid those in the in the future but then again I'm all about that we also did have the bus that ran over the sign at the casino too that's true yeah that was that was like a shock we were coming around the corner like everybody's where the bus where's the bus pete, pete yeah. i must admit what, what happened to the trailer uh, uh, Chris had a little fender bender on the way up to um, Pittsburgh. You should you should leave it just as it is and have a sticker above it. Here's what happens when Kasey acquires Datto. Well, oh, oof, there that it was is. rough. That was rough. You knew that was coming, there right, George? <laughs> oop, oop, there it is. Yeah, no, I, I thought my here? my son said that I should just drill holes and put tie wraps in it, make it look like <laughs> a real race driver, you know, race car, but. Yeah, and of course, that, the, that's the, a little 200 mile an hour tape, right? <laughs> exactly, right? That stuff's amazing what they do with that tape on those cars. <laughs> it's like they tape it together and it gets aerodynamic again. Well, we'll, 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 make, well, but the car is still available. So that's important because we'll have to. The have car's that coming, too. but you know, like those little dimples that are in the, in the sides, you know, NASCAR racers pull those pieces out and can get penalized for that because it, it adds arrow to push the car down hmm. so you know but hey if you're not rubbing paint you're not rubbing so the car looks like it's been rubbed and, and bumped a little bit you know? oh, it, def- it definitely looks like it's been bumped <laughs> <laughs> let's keep there um <laughs> okay all right um so what's new let's let's see what's happening out there in in technology land uh i saw one that was interesting here we go. I, this has probably been talked about a lot of times. When a client declines security services, uh, uh, that seems to be happening often. You know, it, it was it's funny, right? I mean, off, the Office 365 mandatory MFA has been out for a long time. And like as other people pick up the whole security standards thing, you know, all of a sudden it's Oh well, that that import that person at the front desk doesn't have an email address or a, or a or a smartphone, and I'm like, they don't have an email address and they don't have a smartphone, so they have a flip phone and a typewriter. Like, what's mm-hmm. up? And right, like, obviously they have a computer. 
Like, and like, and then it's like, well, they just, it wasn't important. It's a front desk person, but they need to be able to do this thing. And I'm like, man, like you would think everyone's now on the, on the security train, but not really. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, they'll do what they absolutely have to do, but it kind of sounds to me like as you go out into the land and you find out that a lot of people are just not doing this. They're just like, oh, I just won't give them an account, but they can still access the computer. I'm like, shouldn't the computer have it 2FA as well? Oh, well, we don't have that on. I'm like, oh, okay. And they'll I'm only like, do it if something bad happens to them and they get scared. Then they're like, okay, whatever we need to do. But then when a, but then when a mandatory change comes down because people are trying to get you know, up to snuff and like follow the industry standard, you know, the, the world ended, you know, a little bit. Right. So I don't know. It just boggles my mind just a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> the other argument here with all of these changes that eventually had come down across all of these software platforms is what is the best way to communicate those changes, right? I mean, you can send emails, but I feel like emails don't get read a lot. And then like, you know, if people aren't following channels of communication, then you can send all the messages in the world. They're, if they don't read it, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? So it's how kind of like walking into a crowded room, you know, which which conversation are you going to pay attention to? Huh? Yeah, I mean, like, so what are what are you guys doing to communicate changes to your customers? Right? Do you uh, send them a pizza and a message, um, text messages, uh, emails? I mean. You actually you know, go there and like talk. To I go there. Oh, it works. I'll go in person if it's if I notice they're not reading an email. If it's important, I show up and go look. Here's the drill, and you know what choice do they have when you're in their face? Really, I, I love that. I I mean, if you have the time, I love that. I, I just you know it's interesting. Yeah, um, we have a, a bit of a boutique uh, MSP, so our focus is all distributors with a particular ERP product. So. Typically, everybody needs the same stuff, um, you know, security-wise and everything else. So we have a what's trending webinar for our customers, and uh, most of them will, will attend that. And we find that that tends to work fairly well. Oh, I we like record that. it. We record it so that anyone that didn't attend, they get a copy. I know that lots of people don't listen to recordings, but at least, <laughs> you know, they have the opportunity to. <laughs> I like that, but then it goes back to the thing, what if no one ever watches it? Yeah. It, it, I do like how, idea. how often do you have that webinar? Um, we tend to run it quarterly unless there's something major that happens and that we'll stick it in, uh, you know, a little bit sooner. You do you use a service that allows you to gate that webinar so you can see if any of your clients have come back or clients that missed it come and watch it? Yeah, we do. Um, and uh, we're able to. Um, also capture all all comments and chats and everything else as well with it so that helps yeah yeah i mean we do that for some of our customers and that that makes a lot of sense right because you can use it again and again and again but uh it definitely helps uh tracking your customers to see who's paying attention even if they don't respond to your correspondence or get to that initial webinar you can get notification that they came in later yeah so. and we post it on our website as well so um, we actually have our entire webinar series, both the, um, the trending ones as well as other things that we do. So people always have access to that too. Do they have to sign in to get them on your webinar? They do, yes. Good, okay. I was gonna say, if you didn't, then I recommend you do that. So. Hmm. Cool. So I, just, I just saw two different ones. <clears throat> One pops out and says, MSPs need to be building ecosystems with their end customers kind of feed back to this topic, right? Like, can you give them an immersive place to get, you know, the, communi the communication, the activity, the knowledge, all this, whatever, and then drive them to a place? I mean, I think the vendors forever, even with MSPs, have built partner portals for eons, but then nobody ever goes there. Um, don't know how successful it is to have end customers have a similar setup. And then another completely separate topic that I saw you know, are micro business businesses an opportunity for the MSP? And I'm like, hmm, what are you talking about? And they say mm -hmm. there, are mil there are millions of businesses with fewer than five employees. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I, I, aren't these the places, aren't these the, the size companies that we try and avoid? I, I don't know. I have, I have a lot of micro customers like that. They need help too, you know, and we kind of target the smaller 
when I'm, I have, I'm in BNI networking, you know, to try to get business. And there's a Cox guy in my networking group and he's a good power partner, but a lot of them. So the Cox, Cox likes to take the bigger customers. If they get people to sign up with them, they'll send the rest to me. So it's a good exchange, but a lot of them are just small mom and pop businesses. They might have two computers or they might have 10, but that's it. Well, mm. here's another thing yeah. too I want you to think about. Let's talk about a construction business. They might have yeah. three people in the office, yep. but they're doing $25 million a year. Okay, exactly. is that a micro business? There, there's only three PCs. Sometimes there's only one PC. Well, well, there's, a there's, lot of, there's a lot of billing the going out for them. Yeah, yeah, but the employees <clears throat> that are running the bulldozers and the pickup trucks and all, those are still people too, right? But there's only three people in the office. It's kind of like what I said earlier on the reverse, right? Well, there's the lady at the front desk in the office that doesn't have an email address and has a flip phone. I mean, it's like the reverse, right? It's like, well, why does my guy who's who's doing all the digging need a, you know, MFA, an email address and a company cell phone? Right. It but, depends you know, on the a type of, of a lot of these a lot of these construction managers and stuff too are portable. So there may only be three in the office, but there may be portable assets that are out there too that there often are. They don't take get the covered, right? Yep. Yeah. And and a lot of people overlook that and say, oh, that's you know, they only have three users. Well, not really. If you qualify the whole thing out, there's probably a lot of, you know, mobile device management, protection and security and data management that you got to wrap in on that stuff too. So. Yeah. You would think they just hand everybody a cell phone, man. That's what's happening. Like <laughs> Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, whatever. And they're like, oh, I just need another phone. Here you go. Yep. Mobile device management still not happening a lot. It's not. Isn't that amazing? After all these years and all the solutions. I know they go to the cell phone company and they don't tell them, look, I'm a business owner. We need, this is what we need. And it needs to be set up from that side down. I, they're, I love, they're not I love, I love when somebody gets the company cell phone and they sign in with their personal you know, email address yes. for like, you know, iCloud and then they hand it back and you can't reset the phone because <laughs> you need their, you need their password in order to get the phone to a reset point. Darren, <laughs> you're going to say something, buddy. No, oh, you know, we've struggled with, with mobile device management, we just implemented something uh, to try, you know, because most the issue is a lot of people just don't want anything. You could tell them that it's not going to do something on their device or not going to, you know, monitor them or, but, you know, we've run into, you know, resistance just, well, it's my device. And, and unfortunately many companies are just not willing. I mean, we deal with super, super small clients too, and they're not in a position or willing to be able to, pay for another device and another plan. So it's literally just, uh, you know, it's just use your device, but they don't want anything on it because like, Hey, it's mine. You know, I don't want anything on this. So obviously we have some ability to manage through 365, but beyond that, it's, um, it's not a clear cut scenario. Yeah. Fair. Um, it's interesting since we're on this topic, um, Nobody thought about this, right? Because you would think, you know, historically, if it's a company provided device, many of the laws lean towards, hey, you can you can manage that device, you can monitor that device, et cetera. But certain states have started to make it a little bit harder to actually do monitoring of electronic things for your for employees, even if it's even if it is company devices. Was the opposite. We don't have any clients that provide company-owned devices, at least phones. Well, laptops, sure, and tablets, okay, but not, you know, maybe iPads. But on their phones, I, I can't think of one client that issues um, that issues phone anymore. So, you know, and that's kind of the biggest risk factor, you, you'd think. Yeah, but even with this whole work-from-anywhere world that we all live in now, post, you know, <laughs> think post-pandemic, please don't hold me accountable if we're technically still in it. Um, you know, like if like New York, for example, right? You know, we New York is one of those states where they have specific requirements of notification if you're monitoring employee emails, phone calls, um, whatever, logins, right? Are they working? Are they not working? Right? And you actually have to specifically go state by state and see if there are actual notifications more than just the hey, we have the right to monitor stuff. You actually now have to go and like actually have you know do extra steps to notify them that hey we could we could pay attention to these things and I don't think that that's 
super obvious, right? I mean, obviously every every uh, state has their own jam, but like that's now a thing. So when you're talking about not even just mobile device management, you could be talking about a monitoring their Office 365 mailbox. Yeah, right? you know, George, I got a question on that. You, you'd think that if the company is providing the hardware for that, that's I, I can reasonably see the things for monitoring that, but what about their actual connection? You know, are they allowed to monitor the connection, you know, between the ISP and and stuff? Well, does that mean that they have to provide the router in there so that they can do that? Well, does that mean that they have to provide the circuit that they are monitoring? Uh, that was something that's always come up in my mind that makes me wonder. And I'm certainly not smart enough to be able to answer that question. But I, I think I think the answer I think the answer is Brent. Yeah, they need to know, right? Like because. Find- if they're going to come, they could come back and claim, well, privacy, right? And you're going to say, well, if you want me to deliver my service, I need to be able to do X, Y, and Z. So you need to understand that up front and agree that that's what's happening, right, Matt? I find it funny that this is an issue when you can have the CDC pay for cell phone tracking I data. I saw this. I saw this. And and if you if and that's that's you know if you are for or against the CDC pulling that information it doesn't it's irrelevant, you know we we're being tasked with letting a, a client know or an employee know that we potentially could look at their email, but there is no effing way that anyone probably prior to, you know thirty days ago I mean except for the people that live on the fringe understand that they can that someone can pay and get your EIN number and track you where within feet of where you stand mm-hmm. 24 hours a day where your phone Gary, stands. man absolutely and by the way this is, this is a you can, this is available for anybody to purchase it's not that's just exactly over- right and right. that's the part that you know now I'm not again I mean it, there's technically ways to you know that anonymize that or whatever but you know if you're following, it doesn't matter if you're left or right on this, but if you're following the vote fraud, that's where the, you know, if you're following, if you watch 2000 mules, that's where it's on my watch list next to uh, that's 2000 mules. 2000 uh, mules is the Danish um, uh, movie that came out. It's talking about voter fraud specifically. I think it's wrapped around Georgia, but I haven't watched it yet. But the fact of the matter is, is that what they did is they raised the money and they pulled all so cell phone data within the drop boxes in Georgia. And then they correlated that, took them over a year to correlate that and figure out if there was actually people stuffing the boxes. Follow that up with a, a, a story that came out in the last week that the CDC did the exact same thing about churches and schools to see if if you were following social distancing and they have this other list of stuff that they wanted to do. It's really scary stuff when you look at it from the point of view that they're tracking you all the way down to within what two feet of where you your phone is. Um, That's shocking. And then you're here we're talking about what when you look at that that level of, of, of data information and you and I are talking about well, we could possibly look at your login logs. I mean, it's like talking about, I don't know, steaks and amoebas in water. Uh, uh, they're so far apart from each other that I, I, ugh. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. So by the way, yes, you have the ability to go to a cell carrier uh, or, or even uh, a Google or a Facebook or whatever and basically um, buy uh, tracking data. Right. I mean, so it's regularly available. What Matt's talking about was there was um, a group that came together, raised the money, bought this data, and they tracked all drop offs to drop boxes, like voting drop boxes. And then they went back and found security footage and matched it up with the times and the dates of these same people going drop box to drop box to drop box. And they found out that, you know, they're dropping off hundreds of votes thousands of votes in the matter of, you know, hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what that, that's what that film he's talking about is. Uh, but yeah, so it's interesting, right? Uh, anonymized data. Let, let's ask this question. Would you as an MSP subscribe to a tool 
or a SaaS application or some sort of special technology widget, whatever, um, that gives you some sort of benefit, but in return, they collect your data and then sell it. Uh, let's call it anonymized data. Maybe it's not specific to you, but they package data that they collect from their tool and sell it to a third party. Do you, is that something you would be okay with? George, they're doing that anyway. I mean, uh, you know, it's like, it's, there is no, <laughs> should be no illusion about this. If you look at, at most terms and conditions of most things, which nobody ever reads, um, you know, I, <laughs> that's already, it's probably already happening everywhere. And there is no, you know, mm -hmm. go back to the earlier comment about people don't understand. It's like, people can't get their heads around that. There is no, everything is tracked a hundred percent of the time. Nope. You, you can't turn it off. You can't stop it. it people just think, well, you know, uh, it, it, it just doesn't exist. I mean, go back to one of the classic movies of our generation, you know, the enemy of the state back from 1998. Will Smith. I mean, way, you know, way ahead of, well, I mean, yeah, we, you know, good old Will Smith. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's, it's just, there is no, you know, people have an illusion about that, but they think, they think that they can, you know, limit stuff when in reality, you know, they can't, but anyway. Keep your hey, wife hey, I want, out of I want to my make mouth. sure that I, I want Walter to know that I really sympathize with him. I feel the same way. <laughs> Look at yeah, the Walter comments. says they would track me and be like, this dude is lame. He never leaves his house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember this one place, you know, like, you know, just to put a little funny on this. So I was in Boston. Uh, I, was, I was actually bringing Ken Patterson back from uh, one of the original Channel Strong tours. And he's like, hey, I'm going to take you to this pizza place. You're going to love it. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And then we roll. He's like, by the way, you're going to lose cell phone service. And I'm like, huh? And we roll in. Yep. Went to zero. Like literally nothing, nothing. And I, I looked at my phone. I'm like, why, why is that? Why? He's like, oh, well, might be a mob place. I don't know. I'm like, oh, okay, great. So, yeah. How about that cell phone tracking, right? Uh -huh. But the pizza was good, right? Best you ever pizza had. Was, pizza was great. I don't know about best I've ever had, but it was good. I, I, I was a little bit worried about the cell phone signal. Yeah. Next what, thing what, you know. What, what did the guy at the door look like? Uh, I was a lady. She was nice. Italian, you know. <laughs> and, and did her name she bad fit, say she fit, she fit the motif. She fit the motif <laughs> in the place, yeah. Her name was Greedo. Yeah, something like that. I didn't ask, but probably it. Probably right. Um, so yeah, I, it, it'll be interesting to see, I mean, cause like, I, you know, to, to Darren's point, right. They're probably already doing this. I don't know, Darren, but like, you know, that's definitely concerning, right? We're all, we're all worried about, you know, business models, terms and conditions, contract terms, all this other stuff. Well, if they flip the script and do it a Google way, right. Hey, we're going to give it to you for free, but we're going to sell your data. Um, just a different way to get to the, a different, uh, you know, uh, a different result, right? Or same result, which is, you know, if, if they're giving it to you for free, then you are the product. Well, you know? you're, you're exactly right. You are the product if it's for free. And we now have what? One generation, two, potentially three wrapped around getting the free stuff. And, you know, we're, you know, we're arguing about, you know, free speech. I mean, look at Elon Musk. You know, he buys Twitter. Um, a whole slew of people have lost their minds over it. Um, and then five days later, we go, you know, 1984 shows up and we have a ministry of truth. Um, the point is, is that people have, people don't understand how to fight for their rights in a technology-based world where the, where it's, there's no clear way to, 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 get your grievance aired in a timely fashion. Oh. And that's frustrating <laughs> for anybody that's like, you know, hey, I like to get, you know, hey, you can't, you can't collect my data. Okay, fine, un uninstall the app. Well, I can't use my phone now. Mm -hmm. you're, you're effed if you do and you're effed if you don't. And so you, what do you do? You're like, okay, fine, I'll let them track me and move on. <laughs> Except. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword for sure. It's funny when the people that were called paranoid years ago were, were actually correct. I mean, that's that's an interesting cycle. Um, and and you know, you look at the Elon Musk. I'm glad you brought the Elon Musk hasn't even taken control yet, and everyone's head exploded. Oh yeah, 
And, and, you know, this assumption that he is a pro-Trump conservative, he had some feuds with Trump. I consider him a libertarian. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know any more insight Well, the key else. word is assumption. People yeah. assume. They don't know him. Yeah. This is, this is just and, like Kaseya. Everyone's head's exploded and it hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> Uh-oh. Darren, you have a retort? Oh, whoa, 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 no, no. Do not, do not, do not make that comparison, please. That's <laughs> go down that road all day. Anyway. <laughs> that, that Darren says Elon Musk hasn't bought many companies, but Kaseya has. Kaseya is just, we use Kaseya too, but they're just, um, I can't believe the action in Kaseya over the last, like the last five, six years. They're buying companies left and right acquiring them as they say <clears throat> they're using financial tools that you know mm -hmm. companies have been using for quite some time and they're just targeting in this space the concern is what happens you know what happens once you're an actively you know customer active with these products mm -hmm. uh walter says speaking of have to jet to my kaseya one setup good luck walter let us know how that went um you know how, how does that work post you know post post acquisition that's always the big fear I mean, we've talked about it. Yeah, because you're lot. all under one umbrella there. I mean, yeah. And they've already gotten hit before, so. Um, yeah, I mean, did some are, I'm, I'm going to play the other side. Hey, you know, the guys that just got hacked are usually the guys that have battened up the hatches now, right? right? Yeah, sure. now they, they have all those holes plugged that they might have okay. overlooked. But I don't know, because I love the Kaseya platform. I think it's great a great tool. We don't use all of their other modalities like very few of them and their sales guys hammer you our, our accountant our sales account person and he's just and we're like no look we you know we just have these small little companies they don't need all that crap just stop bothering us finally you know we just had to tell them we're gonna we're gonna pull if you don't leave us alone they stopped so. Darren would you like to would you like to add on to this I know this is a favorite topic <laughs> Wait, wait until they're public. I mean, you just said it so well. I love it. I mean, you really, you really kind of hit the nail on the head in some degree about that. They, they are the biggest relentless sales machine, I, you know, more than any other vendor. And I've dealt with lots of them that I've ever, mm -hmm. you know, seen. And that will only work now that, you know, that they have, hey, our rent sucks. Let's get a bird that doesn't. And then we'll try to hammer it into people's heads. And, uh, and that's that's the bottom line. That's the whole model. That's it. Right. So, no, there's so, a, there's so. a real problem. Yeah, uh, okay. you know, we're technologists, and we expect companies to invest in good technology. That's what we want, right? We want mm -hmm. we want to hear that eighty percent of their money is new toys and bells and whistles for us. Financial companies want eighty percent of their money putting mm -hmm. new contracts on the ledger. So that's to me the core of the conflict. Yep. Because Kaseya is a sales machine. I mean, really is. Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think it, you're going like that doesn't please us because we're sitting there going, no, give me new sh stuff. I caught myself there. Um, give me new, <laughs> give me new stuff that makes my life easier. That's right, what we're but, asking. All for. right, but like outbound calling and outbound prospecting absolutely works. I mean, it, it's just, it, it is a viable strategy. Like if nothing other than you could be using a similar strategy, trying to prospect for your own businesses. I mm -hmm. guess the, the, really the argument is balance. How much is enough and how much is over the line? Pete, what are your thoughts? I, 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 I say two things. Cold calling is not dead and email is not dead, right? They're just two more touch points. Uh, and, and it is a tough balance, right? You hear all the time from the technology sector, from all the folks that are on this call, oh, I get called nonstop and I just end up blocking them or tuning it out or looking at the caller ID or, you know, um, it, it's not going to stop. It's going to get stronger. Every, every organization is going to look at doing it. And I probably get, uh, being a marketing firm, we probably get like five solicitations a day for people easily, that easily. swear they can produce and, and promise us that they can deliver results for our customers. And, you know, that's, that's a, Only that's five? a joke. That's a joke in its, in itself. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm probably underestimating that that's only <laughs> what makes it through my filter. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Matt. Go ahead, Matt. You're, you're about to jump in. Yeah. Um, I, I think I, 
I talked to Fred when I was at Robin Robbins. Oh, we, oh, you just start, you just bring this up now. And the, the interesting thing he said on stage was we bought Datto because of their culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, their and, culture was just as fierce as what they're doing too. Datto people are relentless. So, so what really went through my head was McDonald's. Hmm. And I didn't realize you could go through a drive through and buy culture by, you know, I'll take um, the culture happy meal with uh, a little bit of grace and humility with uh, ownership <laughs> and, you know, and I thought so that was I, number five on the menu. Yeah. So I talked to Fred and I pointed out, I go, so you told me that you bought, you, you said on stage that you bought Datto because of culture. Explain to me your culture about attacking another vendor on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Good point. That went over well. well what about his response? I mean, let's not forget. Right. You know, so he, so he basically said, well, I can't control every employee. And I said, but culture comes from the top. And the, so I, I went back and watched his video from the, the breach last year. And the thing that they don't have in their culture is ownership. And, at, you know, this is an egregious, a, a egregious attack on, on Kaseya, blah, 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 blah. You know, 50, 50 employee or 50 clients were affected, blah, 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 blah. You know, we'll get them, you know, whatever. Um, the part that I, I guess the reason I'm so anti Kaseya is that there has been very little ownership and very little thought pattern in listening to what the MSPs are telling him. And can I ask you a question when you're done? Yeah, you sure can. Or, or anyone. So the, the, the part, I, that's the, probably the reason. I told him, I said, look, we're actively killing off Kaseya in our systems. You know, ID agent is the next one on the block. It's, you know. Yeah, we ID dumped that. Agent. That's a bunch of crap. But yeah, that, you know, we moved over to Breach Secure now. It, it's, it's significantly different and better. Um, but the point is, is that, you know, he was, it was like, it was like shocking news. Really? You're, you're leaving Kaseya? I, I, I'm like, dude, are you listening to anyone that's talking? And I don't think he does. I can only, so, so that, I'm going to let that, that, Darren, Darren get yeah. I mean, I mean, his response, everybody forget, people should rewatch that because it's, it's just so, it's so yeah. emblematic of Darren, get to a better signal, that buddy. That is wrong. Get to a better signal, buddy, and then come back oh, in. Sorry. No worries. Sorry. I, I do have a question. Yeah. I don't know Fred. I mean, is Fred a technology guy or is Fred a finance guy? Or is He's Fred a finance a guy. And I think that's a difference. I'm, I've been reading a book about um, uh, a business, one of the business self-help books, because I like to li actually listening in Audible. And one of the things they brought up is, he says, every technology company is formed by people that shouldn't run it. <laughs> he's talking about, and his point was valid, is that we have a different way of thinking in technology. We don't use the, we don't use the same splits of, 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 sales, marketing, investment, R&D, as, as standardized companies do. We're a different model. And so the standard business guy does not work in the technology field, and the standard technology field guy is really not a business guy. And that was kind of his point. Right. Unless he's surrounding himself with technology people on his board and taking their advice, you know, then I don't know how it's room. Well, yeah, dude, it's, I, it's actually I, this whole concept sounds like the an, antithesis of the book, The E Myth, though. You, mm -hmm. you know, just because you're a great engineer doesn't necessarily mean you're a great engineering company r manager or, or person who is capable of creating, forming, and running a business. Exactly. You must have good technology people in your, your business, but I, I don't know that technology people are really good at running the business. Well, and I 100% agree. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, who here can raise up $6.5 billion and buy something? Raise your hand right. now. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I have my, to give my hands credit, down. <laughs> I have to give credit to Fred for the aspect of being able to do that. And from a money point of view, that's exactly what he's in that role for. Now, 
listening to the MSPs and building and building a great culture and making sure their systems are patched and making sure that they're providing a great experience to us, that's not in his wheelhouse. And he should own getting, that. It's getting better, but it's nowhere near perfect. Unless it's the Walmart theory. Software management is, leaves a lot to be desired. Oh. Unless it's the Walmart theory. Remember where Walmart was starting up all those grocery stores? Especially, my son was in, in college in Kansas at the time. They basically opened these grocery stores that shut down the local, and this was in interior Kansas and, you know, not big cities. It's, it's all over down here. And, 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 and then shut them down and then basically went home. Okay, we're done. And then now people are having to drive. His, his uh, in-laws still live in um, near Hillsboro, Kansas, and they have to drive now to a few cities over to a, a big Walmart mm -hmm. to get their groceries because of look. So, you know, one of the strategies, and I don't know, I mean, I have no insight with a Kaseya could be, <laughs> why don't, are we just going to beat it up so everyone goes home? Mm -hmm. uh, I think when you look at a big company like Kaseya, they also look at client churn. And they have, they have, you know, a lot of times as a smaller business, you don't look at it, but there is an acceptable amount of churn that they will accept is, yeah. right as customers but, well, but and, if you listen if you listen to so, darren's uh, hypothetical percentage of the churn on the data partners it's going to be way above that if he's right mm -hmm. and, and I, I i bet you it's it's probably if knowing that fred's a money guy and 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 on that dollars and cents if the churn rate was too high he'd change something whether it was leadership or somebody in a position that needed to do something or it could just be that, um, just like other organizations that fit very well into his being, uh, you know, um, the, the red marketing machine, right? Um, churn is high, but the sales engine is very, very aggressive. Well, Pete, so uh, they I may be churning, but gaining at the same time. So the it's three, a net net. The three-year contract delays. Bingo. Them. Yeah. It, it, yeah Pete, it makes I, it look like the money is still there, but in yeah. reality, it, there's a cliff at the end. Right. How but, many how many MSPs out there are waiting till their contract comes up due to leave Kaseya? Okay. They're in this weird three-year window because we're coming up at the end of we're coming up the end of the first year, which will be in July, when a big chunk of people really got pissed and said, fuck them, we're going somewhere else. And what's happening is now that people that signed, you know, were able to get a less than a 36-month agreement or something like that, or maybe this is their window or whatever. They've been paying attention. There is now this, this 36 month window we're in, people are gonna leave and they're gonna see this mass exodus and they're gonna go, wow, we didn't see that coming. Really? See, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. I think that. I think that they're probably smart enough to say that they know they've got an aggravated community right now. And that's why the sales engine is so relentless. They've, okay. got, they've got to do the one for one churn or the two to one churn. So they've got to get that subscribership up in order to be able no, to I, I, absorb I some that. of that. So well, let me add to my story. So before I talked to Fred, I talked to Rob. Daddy. I asked him, so what's up? You know? What's, you know, what's your take on this? Little things like that. And I expressed some frustrations with him. He says they were expecting pushback. They were not expecting the pushback they got. Mm. So, so Pete, when you say that, you know, there it's in the numbers aspect of, you know, around st statistics, which I, which logically I follow you. I, you know, again, it, the proof's in the pudding here. I, we're moving away from, say yeah we have a lot of people i was on tech or tech uh, tribe and there was a post on this and i basically stepped up and said look i'm you know stop bitching if you're not, not going to move the only way we stop this is to move our dollars mm -hmm. and if you're not going to move your dollars shut the fuck up yeah, good point yep you know, if, if you're, you're just going to bitch about it, maybe we'll just create a thread that says bitch about Kaseya, but i'm not going to do anything about it because i'm a pussy Go bitch there. <laughs> uh, but, but Matt, here's the attitude that we've got here. It's like, oh, but I married you. I, I can change you if, if I yell at you enough. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, well, what if, what if on the other hand, just, and I have no insight again, 
because say it comes through, you know, the, 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 the sale occurs, they have data con and for the first year or so, there's no change in your contract. Does that help them get the dust, dust to settle? Because I think most people, and I'm one of them, I'll raise my hand, I'm guilty. I'm thinking like the day after it closes, I'm getting this three year, three year, three year, where I finally said, stop calling me. I'll just use someone else because I don't want to hear you anymore. Um, and then if they just back down and you go like, there is no change. I, I don't know. What I, what I do know is I'll speak from our client, from our business point of view. Moving a PSA in an RMM, that's a decision you can't make overnight with a knee jerk re reaction, unless you have what, 50 people you work with, tops, you know? Um, the fact of the matter is, is that for us, where we are, funny, funny story, our contract after this call, I have a, I've called in 14 minutes with Datto because our contract automatically removed, renewed for 36 months in March. I oh. kid you not. Yep. And um, were we notified? Did they reach out? Did they talk to us? No. And so the interesting part, would we have, would we have complained if Kaseya wasn't involved? Probably not. The, the thing that I keep pointing back to is that look at the products that they purchased. What noticeable changes can you point to? And can you tell me the product's drastically better today than it was then? And, you know, they keep talking about Kaseya One. Um, as far as I know, everything is in its own dashboard that looks like their own stuff, which technically makes it easy for them to sever them and push them somewhere else if they sell them in the future. But I don't see a integration component that makes this simpler and the billings all over the place. And they've been trying to get that together. I am um, Matt, didn't Fred at Robin Robin say that every product they have has had 500 plus features added and oh, all this innovation. Oh, and I, I asked him about that too. And he says, I'm willing to take your bet that that one was a hundred thousand to a hundred dollar bet on, on um, that. He took my card and says, I'll call you. And he talked to some chicks sitting there. Hey, let's just make a little time with Matt. We'll call him about it glue about the things we haven't done. <laughs> I'm waiting. I haven't seen that call. Matt, let me know when, let me know when you get that call, please. I appreciate it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll update you. It's now it's been yeah. a week plus. <laughs> I haven't heard anything. Remember, remember, folks, all Kaseya cares about in the short term is the IPO, which will inevitably be Q1, maybe Q2 next year. Yep. That's what they're focused on. Sign up as many people as they can, because once that hits, it, it, even if their stock, it doesn't matter if it opens and drops. It, it makes no difference. All of these people, Fred and Fred included, are going to get richer than they already are right. as soon as that IPO happens. It makes no difference what really happens to the share price that much once it actually hits. So the the rush is the numbers have to get as high as they can with no focus really beyond that. And that's people people don't understand how important that is for you know them i mean they were going to be public by this you know last year i mean if it wasn't for their ineptness uh, and their you know letting them get hacked so i mean anyway it's very it's just so obvious what's happening and you're so right about the people i mean so many people complain and then like well we're going to wait and see we're not going to rush we're going to we're mm -hmm. going to see how the dust settles right okay so good luck with that everybody so i have a question if you guys are leaving Kaseya, who who would you go to? Does everybody agree on a, a different vendor? Are you talking that, about a RMM or a PSA yeah. or what are you talking about? An RMM up or or security I mean, or yeah, another company? Yeah, but another security. company that does what Kaseya does. It offers similar things. Well, plenty of companies do it, and and I would say, like in my as I have said on these previously, my concern is not RMM as as of yet or PSA. Particularly, I don't use the PSA in the same uh, heavy way that a lot of others do. Mm -hmm. it, it is the backup for now. That's where I'm focused on. And um, both Axiant and Acronis have really good reputations. I am happen to be moving to Axiant with backup. We're in that process right now. It's going very well. But And, and there's others too, but those are the two that I've consistently heard. I, well, no, I'm, we're not using Acronis, but we're we're using Axiant, and and I actually have 
you know, was, as I've said previously, kind of had seen a lot of people switching to Axiant way before this was announced. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And um, let's just say I can kind of see why as we're in the early stages of the migration. Cool. Well, has anybody else evaluated other things if you're actively looking? Because there's a lot of products on the table. Could say it has like 30 different companies underneath if, the umbrella at this point. Right now, we're demoing Ninja RMM. It's pretty pretty good. Uh, Enable is on our list. Um, I mean, the list is pretty small, realistically, when it comes to um, a couple of things. I know that Ninja RMM is going to have a PSA in beta sometime end of this year. Um, so if so they release the light ticketing system, but that's not yeah, what you're yeah, talking it's about. A, it's a ticketing system. It's not a PSA that they have now. Right. They They have a inside their RMM and when you click on a tenant, they have a, a document management system similar to IT glue as it is, you know, as it is sexy as IT glue, it is not. It's very functional though. Um, I, I have high hopes for Ninja RMM. Um, you know, the, the, you know, the enable component, you know, has the solar winds stigma tied to it, even though quote unquote, that they did not have share data and they were a separate company even then. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, you're you're looking at ConnectWise, you know, which I'm not a fan of either. Um, you know, sticking with Datto for you know for the foreseeable future until something completely blows up, or um, you know, looking at something else. Synchro is is you know I've heard good things and bad things. There's lots of different like PSAs have come out of the woodwork lately. I don't know. There's like five of them that I've never heard of a year ago, and they like all appeared. Super Ops. Yeah, Super Ops is another one. Yep, exactly. Halo. 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 Yes. And there's probably By a handful way, more coming. I was talking to Nigel, and uh, he brought up a great point, and I think he's right. We buy PSAs mostly that we don't need. Yep. Uh, there are so many components in the PSA that it doesn't do well. And, uh, and he's a successful guy, and I, I really enjoy talking to him. And, you know, he's talking about use a separate CRM and use it for all your funnel building and everything. And, you know, instead of you don't have to manage that through your PSA, you can let a grow build, you know, some other something that's really designed to do that. Yep. And, and when you sell, it's not that hard. Just move one or two over. Uh, everyone's worried about integration and all the stuff you're going like some of it you're going like. By the time you complained about all the immigration and looked for it and looked at it, you go, you could have just copied that client over. Um, and so I, I wonder. I don't, I don't think, I mean, but to that point, Keith, I don't think it's integration from just the contact or, you know, the, the tracking and all that stuff. I think it's more integration from, hey, you know, you're using these vendors in your stack and then that is synchronizing you know, user counts and billing information and ticketing. That's different. I think that's different. I, I think that's, I mean, that's not your prospecting. Your Correct. integration for billing is important, but I think that some, I think there's a lot of features in PSAs that, that make it clunkware. No, I 100% agree. You should not be doing, if you're doing prospect, prospecting on your PSA, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, if you're doing it, what we really realistically as business owners, what do we want from a PSA? We want clean connection uh, tracking of assets, mm -hmm. configuration items into contracts that we can accurately uh, bill our clients on time without having to go back and fix the billing because something didn't do didn't synchronize right. That's what I'm asking for. And then the right. next part of it is reporting wrapped around that Joe, Joe my tech, you know, was 50% um, profitable last month. When the month before he was. 70%. Why the 20% drop off? That's the, realistically helping us with that um, is a big deal. Um, you know, if you're talking RMM, you know, communications between your backups and your eight, your um, dashboard, because that's where the techs hang out is in the RMM all day. Right. You know, that's stuff that makes our life easier is definitely <laughs> what things are. Us sending out mass emails out of our PSA because, you know, we would like to sell them, you know, the latest and, you know, dark web scanning. Um, that's realistically not where that should be, but, you know, you have a lot of bad business owners that only want to buy one product because A, they, can't, they can only afford one product or B, they don't know what this product does. 
Mm -hmm. All right, let me bring it up to something George understands being in the phone business. How many people buy a phone and insist on features and you go into their office five years later and you go, you haven't used half of the features you said you had to have. 100%. You know, I have people, I want a thousand speed dials. I go, I've never seen anyone in my life put over 25 in, right? You're going to set a world's record. Um, <laughs> and, but, and I think it's the same thing we look at at some of the tools we buy. And then if you go by and look at these tools, you go, I bought a Rolls Royce when I, all I need to do is get to the bus stop. And I, and I, and I, I think there's that. Is it, but, but isn't part of it, um, Keith? Well, if I'm buying this product and I'm locked in for three, four, five years, whatever I ended up signing for, I'm hoping that I grow to the point where those features are going to help me. So I'm going to ask those questions now, even though I can't use them with the hope that since I'm in this long-term contract, that's going to be there when I need it. Right. Uh, you know, maybe there was an IT, uh, we were naive when we bought it, and I think there's some value to it. But I think it, it, I think as we grow, then we, at least for me, we started looking at best of breeds instead of trying to put you know round pegs into square holes. You said if I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this right, I'm not going to make. Uh, you know, Dano came out with some kind of document hook on to you going like it wasn't what you get from the ones that specialize in documentation. And so um, as I, and as we mature, become business mature, you go, you know what? No, if I need to add that, I'm going to add it right. So this comes back to Darren's consistent comment, which is, I don't want all my eggs in one basket. I want the product that fits best for this line item. By the way, except for the, what occurred in the business, I would say I originally did want all my eggs in one basket. So it was easy, it was easier to manage. I, I really would have liked living in my fantasy world where there was one vendor that I could say I picked up 60, 70 percent of my stack growth. I wish that absolutely. I mean, Keith, Keith, to be fair, Keith, to be fair, I think you're still living in a bit of a fantasy world, but that's another story. That's definitely true. <laughs> no, but I mean, isn't it the, the premise is you know, simplify your vendors, minimize them, you know, for, for profitability, for our own management. But yes, there's the argument of you don't want them all in one basket. And sanity. And, and well, there's two things. I, I, I agree agree with you from a simplicity point of view and profitability point of view, but we need to ask more of our vendors, not more features. We need to ask for quality over some of the other stuff that they do. I mean, like for example, someone mentioned Datto in their document management system. Has anyone used it? It's shit. It's and, terrible. and the reasoning that it's shit is because Ryan Weeks, their, their CISO, is making an effort not to build it because he doesn't think they should build it. And I, I can see where he's coming from I because I asked him about it directly. Now, this does that mean that, you know, the you know what's our other options well there's it portal there's one there's uh, that one that starts with a c or v it's like voodoo or v vusu or whatever um it's an h but yeah there's and and guess what you can store you can host them yourselves in your own cloud you can back them up you can you know that stuff which is you know gosh it glue has only been people have been asked for a backup on that for i don't know since the beginning of time and it just came but, out but it's, a, it's available but at like the enterprise level right yeah yeah exactly so and yeah anyway i thought that was a cop out too we can't fix our uh, reliability yeah it's 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 because as as keith you pointed out earlier the investments that are made it's just clear that Kaseya spends the bulk of their money, no matter what they might tell you otherwise, on the sales and marketing machine, not on improving the product. IT glue has stagnated. It's worse than ever, honestly. Oh, Net Network glue, which was we were locked into a contract with because it was going to replace all the other tools like Ovic, is a total joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it really, it, I mean, this is what happens. So they're going to take a great, platform that Datto took a long time to get and build and it's going to it's it's going to be destroyed. I mean it, it's just inevitable. 
I mean, I, it, it's so obvious that I, I don't understand why people think otherwise, especially the ones that complain. Um, but like, we're just going to win. I think to Matt, you know, Matt made Matt made the point earlier, right? He said in this conversation, I think they're surprised by the amount of pushback. But I think in, a, in an earlier call, I think you know somebody said these companies were diametrically opposite, right? From a, from the marketplace's view, right? That was kind of the you know channel friendly, community friendly, you know you know, kind of company and, and Kaseo was the opposite of that. Right. I mean, that was, it was the sentiment that somebody said was out there. So, you know, what, what, what I don't understand at, at, in that picture is, you know, from a investment, you, you, these guys combined duplicates, they're duplicates, right? I mean, everything is duplicated here. Yeah. You, you may want good culture. You don't need to buy it. I mean, it's smart to buy a company to, to, to help bring that in, but you have duplicate of, of processes, you have duplicate of everything. And so you don't have twice the size. You don't have the 60 million or 6 billion plus their original. The valuation is, is going to be stupid because people don't understand the technology behind what they've, what they've done. They're just bought recurring revenue. <laughs> well, they well, didn't they, understand they, data. That's why, it's, that's why their stock price was so low. You know, and, and you know, well, it's according to Fred. That's what he said on stage. You know, they didn't understand the, the company. And then they're, he's turned around. He wants to put a, put Kaseya into. And he's thinking that they're going to be people are going to understand that. Um, you're you're right. I mean, there's a there's a there's a podcast on this uh, and the MSP Alliance Group, I think it is. Whoever does that podcast, he talked about this and he goes, you know, they could spin off one of the backups, the one that's less profitable. Let's say they spin off one for let's say a billion dollars. I don't know, whatever. Well, he's made one sixth of his his money back you know, and leaned up before they went private or public, you know, so there's lots of options, but I agree. There's double, there's almost duplication of everything and they're going to have to, they're going to have to, as a company, streamline it down to something. Well, we will uh, have to wait and see, but definitely can speculate on what could happen, but uh, to everybody's point, right? Matt, seems like you've done a lot of homework. Uh, Appreciate your feedback on your conversation with Fred. And with Rob, um, I'm sure there's a lot of little conversations like that along the way. They just don't always make it to this type of forum. But um, yeah, I think I think this thing's happening, guys. I don't think I, yeah, I, I I appreciate vote with your dollars, right? That's true, hundred percent true. But definitely, I think this thing's going through. I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So we will see. Uh, until then. We will be back on Thursday, 1 o'clock Eastern time. The session was recorded, available at MSBinitiative.com. And we'll uh, catch you on the next one, guys. Well, thank you. See you guys. Bye, everybody. Ciao.